Chapter 6 I bet I can get down to the second floor before you do. Oswaldo Vasquez had been standing at the top of the stairs, and Jamal was already halfway down. He knew what Ozzy was going to do. He would jump down the first flight, then jump down the second flight while Jamal was running. Bet, Jamal said. Ozzy and Jamal jumped at the same time. Jamal lost his balance a little, but got to the second flight at the same time that Ozzy did. They both jumped at the same time again and landed together at Mr. Davidson's feet. There was a picture of George Washington over Mrs. Orwell, Mrs. O'Connell's desk and a picture of Martin Luther King over Mrs. Rowe's desk in the office. Jamal and Ozzie had been sitting in the principal's office all morning with their hands folded in their laps. Jamal looked at the pictures and wondered why the one of George Washington wasn't finished. At 11 o'clock, Mr. Davidson called Jamal and Ozzie into his office. Oswaldo, you have a fairly decent record, Mr. Davidson held a folder in his hand. Why are you associating with somebody like Hicks? Ozzie shrugged and looked down at his shoes. I'm giving you two warnings, Oswaldo, Mr. Davidson said. The first one is that if I get any more complaints about you this term, especially about you fooling around in the hallway, you're going to find yourself in a lot of trouble. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Oswaldo spoke quietly. The second warning is that if you continue to find people like Jamal Hicks for your friends, you're going to be in trouble if you like it or not. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You can go. Oswaldo stood, stood quickly and left without looking at Jamal. I'm not going to give you a warning because I don't think it's going to do you any good, Mr. Davidson said to Jamal. So you just go on and do what you want to do. Sooner or later, you're going to do something that's going to let me put you out of the school. You know that, and I know that. Go on to your classroom. They were collecting homework when he went into the room, and Jamal turned his in. Then they started talking about how the government was divided up into three parts. The teacher called on Jamal and asked him if he could name the third part, after Tamiya Davis has said the Supreme Court and Congress. The executive, Jamal said. Dwayne cracked up. It's the president, stupid, he said. Jamal is right. It's the executive branch, of which the president is the head. Jamal looked over at Dwayne. Dwayne was still laughing. Even though the teacher said that Jamal was right, Dwayne was acting as if he were wrong. The class went on, and Dwayne kept looking back at Jamal and laughing. He got Billy to laugh, too. The only way to deal with somebody stupid like Dwayne, Jamal thought, was to punch him out. Dwayne always acted so tough, and he thought Jamal was scared of him, but he wasn't. He wasn't scared of anybody. Jamal waited on the corner until Tito showed up. Tito had on one of Jamal's shirts. Why are you wearing my shirt to school? Jamal asked. This ain't your shirt, Tito said. This used to be your shirt, but now it's mine because I wear it more than you do. That's because you don't give it back. <coughs> Excuse me. That's because you don't give it back, Jamal said, as they walked down the street. You gotta go home, right? Tito, Tito asked. Uh-huh. Let's go over to the boat place. All the way down to 79th Street? Yeah. Okay. It took Jamal and Tito almost an hour to get down to the boat basin, but it was worth it. It was mid-October, and soon there wouldn't be any boats around, but there were still a few now. Tito started coughing. Jamal hated it when Tito coughed. It seemed as if there was something in Tito's chest that made him swell that he was trying to get out. When he coughed really hard, Tito's eyes would roll around and glisten with his efforts. Jamal put his arm around Tito's shoulder. This time the coughing didn't last that long, and soon they were going along the walk picking out boats. Sorry. And soon they were going along the walk picking out boats the way they always did. See that one? Tito pointed out a small boat with a black and gold trim. Yeah? That's going to be my first boat, Tito said. I'm going to get one just like that, and then later, when I get really rich, I'm going to get that big one over there. What are you going to do with the little one? Jamal leaned over the side of the rail. Maybe I'll give it to my wife or something, Tito said. Suppose you ain't married. Then maybe I'll give it to a poor kid. I'm going to get a big boat first, Jamal said. You ought to save your money first. 
Suppose there's a war or something and they start dropping bombs and everything. What you think they're gonna bomb first? They ain't gonna bomb the boats, man. No way. Yes, they are. They're gonna bomb everything the rich people got. Maybe. A man in a blue jacket and white sailing cap came from below deck on one of the boats. Tito nudged Jamal. Then they both waved to the man. The man waved back. The boys watched as he went about the boat checking things, then climbed over the side onto the pier. Let's go ask him how much the boat costs, Tito, Tito said. He won't even tell us. You scared? Jamal gave Tito a look and pushed away from the railing they were leaning against. Tito didn't catch up with him. Jamal knew that Tito was the one who didn't like talking to strangers. It didn't bother him. How much your boat cost? he asked when they had reached the man. Thinking of buying it, are you? The man was taller than he had looked on the boat. He had a sharp nose, gray-blue eyes, and just the beginning of a small beard. Jamal smiled and looked at the boat. I just want to know how much it cost you. It's not really my yacht, the man said. The company I work for owns it, but I get to use it. Anybody in your company can just ride on it when they want to? Not anybody, the man said, but I can. How much it cost? Tito spoke up. I would think in the neighborhood of about $85,000. I might get me one when I get a job, Jamal said. Good luck with it. The man touched the front of his cap and started off. That's a lot of money, Tito said. He's probably rich. He looks rich. He ain't that rich, Jamal said, because he's working for a company. If he was real rich, he would have his own boat. His own yacht, Tito said. Yeah, you know that got a C in it? What? Yacht. Got a C in it, Jamal said. I saw it in a reader. I think we have to go home now, Tito said. You got asthma? A little. You got car, car fare to go home? Uh-uh. You? Uh-uh. They walked downtown to 72nd Street and Broadway. They were thinking of sneaking on the train there, but there were two cops standing near the booth. One was white, the other black. My friend got asthma, Jamal said. Can we get on the train because he can't walk all the way uptown? Get out of here. You don't got to be nasty about it, Jamal said to the black cop. What are you, a wise guy? The white cop tapped Jamal lightly with his nightstick. Jamal pushed the nightstick away and glared at the cop. Tito started coughing again. He took Jamal's arm and began to pull him away from the two cops. Jamal pulled his arm from Tito's grasp. You see he got the asthma, Jamal said. Get out of here. The white cop waved his hand toward the gates and Jamal took Tito's arm and pulled him through. Tito coughed a lot on the way uptown. A woman gave him a packet of tissues. You know what we could do if we were rich, Jamal said. We could go live someplace warm and maybe you wouldn't get asthma all the time. We could live in Puerto Rico, Tito said. We could get us a boat and drive to Puerto Rico. If we had two boats, we could race. Why, Jamal answered. You get in that little boat and I'm getting the big boat, so you know I would win. Yeah, I forgot, Tito said. Chapter 7 Mama had burned her hand real bad in the morning. Sassy had been getting ready to go to school when she opened her school bag and all of her crayons fell out. They started rolling around the floor and something rolled under the ironing board. Mama was ironing Jamal's shirt. What you doing, girl, Mama shouted as Sassy started scrambling around on the floor picking up the crayons. Jamal saw the whole thing happen, just like a movie. Sometimes he saw things like that. First, Mama started to look over the ironing board to see where Sassy was. Then she hit the cord to the iron with her arm, and the iron fell over. It wasn't going to fall off the ironing board, but Mama grabbed it anyway. She grabbed it with her bare hand and pulled it away from the edge of the board. Sassy, move! I'm just getting my crayons, Sassy said. But Jamal had already seen Mama jerk her hand away from the iron. You okay, Mama? Mama stood the iron up with the other hand and held on to the wrong, held on to the handle. What's wrong? Sassy stood up. Mama was shaking her hand. Then, when she saw that Sassy wasn't going to be burned, she went over to the sink and ran some cold water over the burn. Jamal didn't look at Mama's hand. He looked at her face. 
Mama's teeth were tight together and her eyes were closed. Mama? Sassy turned her head to one side so she could see Mama's face too. It ain't nothing, girl, Mama said. Get on to school before you be late. Jamal didn't say anything. He put his shirt on real fast so Mama wouldn't try to finish ironing it. It looked okay anyway. Dwayne started some mess in school. First, Myrna got in trouble for blowing a bubble in the classroom. Myrna was always doing things and not getting caught, but this time Mrs. Rich caught her blowing the bubble. Then Myrna started saying stupid things about Mrs. Rich and about how short her hair was and stuff. Then Dwayne started. Nobody paid him any attention. Then he started on Jamal. How come your shirt look okay in the front and all wrinkled up in the back, he said, making sure everybody could hear him. How come your face is all wrinkled up, Jamal said. Dwayne kicked him from across the aisle. Jamal waited until Mrs. Rich was facing the board, and then he kicked Dwayne back as hard as he could on the back of the leg. I'm going to punch you in your eye, faggot, Dwayne stood up. Sit down, Mrs. Rich's voice cut through the classroom. He kicked me, Dwayne said. I didn't kick him. You're going to get you outside. I'm going to get you outside, Dwayne sat down. He was nodding his head, and then he started punching his fist into the palm of his hand. Jamal wasn't scared of Dwayne. He had already fought Dwayne once. Everybody said that Dwayne won the fight because Jamal had a cut lip, but Jamal had got Dwayne two times in the face, and it was Dwayne, even though he was a lot bigger than Jamal, who had stopped fighting first. In science, they saw a movie. It was about water pollution. One part showed birds covered with oil on a beach. The oil was so thick that the birds couldn't fly. That's Jamal's mama. Dwayne's voice came from the back of the room. Jamal didn't feel like fighting. Let's just go, Tito said. I ain't gonna punk out. He too big. I don't care. Dwayne came down the street with Billy Ware, Myrna, Ralph, and Ralph Williams. Jamal gave Tito his books to hold and then crossed his arms in front of him. Fight, Myrna called out and some kids from across the street started crossing over. So why you kick me, fool? Dwayne stood as close as he could to Jamal. Cause I did, Jamal said. Dwayne pushed Jamal, and Jamal pushed him back. Then Dwayne kicked Jamal just below the knee. The pain was sudden, and Jamal bent over to grab his knee. Dwayne hit him on the back of his head, and Jamal grabbed Dwayne around the waist. Dwayne was almost 14, big, and he could hit hard. He just kept punching Jamal in the back, but Jamal wouldn't let go of his waist. He tried to hold Dwayne and kick his legs, but he couldn't reach them. Then he started forward, forcing Dwayne back faster and faster until they stopped. Jamal could see that they had fallen against a car. Dwayne tried to pull Jamal around and get him against the car. Jamal grabbed J Dwayne's legs and lifted it and pushed forward again. Dwayne slid along the car and then went down. On the ground, Jamal let go of Dwayne and started punching. Dwayne got him in the face twice, and he swung back at Dwayne's face. They were lying on the ground punching, and Dwayne was trying to kick him when two men pulled them apart. You guys got nothing better to do than tear your damn clothes up? Both the men were mailmen. Jamal looked at his shirt and saw that it was torn. Hey, Dwayne, Myrna called out. You got doo-doo on your pants. Dwayne looked at his pants and turned back toward Jamal when he saw what was on them. I'm going to get you again tomorrow, Dwayne was saying. You go that way, one mailman pointed down the street and pushed Dwayne in that direction. And you go that way. You okay? Tito was waiting for Jamal. Yeah, Jamal answered. Look, loan me your sweater so my mama don't see how I tore my shirt. Tito took off his sweater and gave it to Jamal. I think you won the fight, Tito said. He don't hit so hard, right? He hit pretty hard, but I got some in too. And he the one that rolled in that dog doo-doo. I wish his face had rolled in it. What are you going to do if you start up tomorrow? Start up with him? Mama wasn't home. Sassy was in her room, and Jamal went straight to the bathroom. He took the shirt off and looked at it. Dwayne had torn his pockets off and ripped the shirt right down the front. Jamal's face hurt too and he had a bruise on his elbow that he hadn't noticed before. Jamal, you in there? Yeah? Come out. Why? I gotta pee. Shut up. Come on out, I gotta pee. Jamal opened the door and came out. 
What happened to you? Sassy asked. Nothing. Don't tell me nothing. I thought you had to pee. I don't have to pee now. Where, Mama? She went to work for Mr. Stanton, Sassy said. How her hand? Messed up. She put some lard on it, and then she put a bandage on it. Sassy started doing her homework on the kitchen table. Jamal went to Sassy's room and opened the closet. Jamal went through it until he found Randy's old scorpion jackets. Randy had two scorpion jackets. One was larger than the other. It was the smaller one that Jamal tried on. It was still a little bit too big for him, but not by much. Everybody was talking about the fight when Jamal got to school the next day. Dwayne had reached school first and was talking about how he had beat up Jamal. He looks okay to me, Mariner said when she saw Jamal. Oswaldo, Vaz Oswaldo Vasquez said that the fight had been even, and most of the kids who liked Jamal said it was. The ones who liked Dwayne said that he had won. Jamal didn't think the fight was even. He thought he had probably lost it, but it didn't mean anything to him. He knew he couldn't fight his best when he was thinking about Mama and getting Randy out of jail and stuff like that. Some of the girls started in giggling and pointing to him, but he just let it go. We're gonna have to settle this mess, Dwayne said when they reached math. You gonna punk out? I'll be there, Jamal said. Just bring your butt so I can kick it again. Dwayne had called him out in front of everybody, like he was in a movie or something, Jamal thought. That's how Dwayne was getting off, like a cowboy. Jamal told himself that this, that this time, the fight would be different. He was going to try to tear Dwayne's shirt, and then instead of grabbing him around the waist, he was going to go for his face right away. Today, we're going to study decimals, Mrs. Rich was saying. Who can tell me where the word decimal comes from? The night before, Mama hadn't got home until almost 10.30. Jamal and Sassy had been worried. Sassy didn't even fall asleep the way she usually did. When Mama got home, she had some Kentucky Fried Chicken and French fries. How come you so late? Sassy asked. Mr. Stanton let me work until 9.15. As slow as I was working with the hand, I wouldn't have made no money quitting at 5.30. Your hand bother you a lot? Jamal asked. It's okay, Mama said. I take this bandage off and let it get some air. It'll be okay in the morning. Jamal looked over at Sassy. It had been her fault. Her and her stupid crayons all over the floor that Mama had burned her hand in the first place. Sassy had given him a look right back. Jamal, do you ever think there will be a day when you pay attention in this class? Mrs. Rich asked. Yes, ma'am. Can you give me the decimal for the fraction five-tenths? No, ma'am. The day took forever. She saw Tito in the hallway, and Tito said that he had changed his mind about the boats. Now he was going to buy the big boat first, too. Too late now, Jamal said. You already said you were going to buy the small boat. I'm going to buy the same size boat that man was on, Tito said. I'm getting a boat bigger than that, Jamal said, so I'm still going to beat you to Puerto Rico. Not if my father's on my boat, Tito said, because he knows all about how to get to Puerto Rico. So I can get me a map. He don't need a map. You're going to wait for me outside? Yeah. Jamal forgot about the fight with Dwayne until the last period, when Dwayne started up again. Dwayne pushed Jamal as they walked into the classroom. Dwayne, what is your problem? The teacher asked. I don't have a problem. Dwayne had this big smile on his face and was looking around. Well, I think you do. Mrs. Mitchell was tall, with gray-blue eyes. And you can just stay after school until you solve it. I can't stay this afternoon, Dwayne said. I got something to do. He looked at Jamal, and a few of the other kids started laughing. You'll stay, Mrs. Mitchell said. During the class, Dwayne whispered something to Billy, and Jamal saw Billy writing a note. Billy put it on Jamal's desk, but Jamal just pushed it off. When Mrs. Mitchell left the class to get some ditto sheets, Billy turned to Jamal. Dwayne want to know if you're going to wait for him outside, Billy said out loud. Or are you going to run like a punk, Dwayne said. I'm going to run over to your house and see your mama, Jamal said. Dwayne threw his spelling book, his spelling workbook at Jamal. The pages opened and it fluttered through the air as Mrs. Mitchell came in. Dwayne, did you just throw that book? I went to hand it to you. Quiet. Mrs. Mitchell shut Dwayne up. Jamal stood on the corner after school. He knew that Dwayne had to stay until at least 3.30. 
He wasn't sure if he was going to wait for him or not. He wanted some of the kids to see him there so they wouldn't say he was too scared to show up. Yo, Jamal. Jamal looked up to see Mac. What's happening? Let's take a walk. I got something for you, Mac said. I gotta wait for Tito. I gotta go down the block, Mac said. I can't be near the school or nothing. I'll be on the next corner. How do you know I went to the school? Jamal asked. Me and Randy did some business around here once, Mac said. He told me. Mac walked on, and Jamal leaned against a pole. At the top of the pole, there was a yellow sign that said, Watch out for children. You waiting for Dwayne? Billy had his books in a new book bag. Get out of my face. I just asked you a question, Billy said. Jamal pushed away from the pole, and Billy started walking. Jamal thought about Mac waiting for him down the block. He had a bad feeling about Mac, a real bad feeling. Jamal glanced up toward his homeroom. He felt Dwayne would be there, looking down at him, but he wasn't. Tito came. Hey, I heard you were going to fight Dwayne again. He started some more mess. You waiting for him now? Jamal shrugged. You want me to help you fight him? Uh-uh. I gotta go anyway. Mac is down the street waiting for me. Who? Tito asked as they started down the street. Most of the kids from school had already left. No one was supposed to stay in the front of the school after three, but a few were still standing around. You know, that guy we met cross town. Oh. Jamal looked at Tito. Why you say oh like that? Like what? Like... Just like, oh, Jamal said. That's the way I always say, oh. Mac was standing on the corner and motioned for Jamal and Tito to follow him. They followed him down the street at a distance until he stopped and went into a building. What do you want? Tito asked. I don't know. Probably something about the scorpions. You can't be a scorpion, Tito said, shaking his head. How come? Because you're going to get in trouble, Tito said. That's what I think. If I start to be a scorpion, you want to be in the gang? What you gotta do to get in? I'll just let you in. Okay. I thought you said I couldn't be no scorpion, Jamal said, smiling. I don't think you should be, Tito said. But if I'm in the scorpions, maybe we can get them to do some good things, too. And we can look out for each other, Jamal said. The building that Mac went into was old. The mailbox in the small hallway was dented, and the plaster chipped away from one corner. There's a meeting of the scorpions today, Max said. Jamal hadn't noticed before that Max's breath smelled of wine. What the meeting about? I told them you were taking over the gang, Max said. They want to meet you. What they say when you told them that? They say they want to vote for a new leader, but I told them that Randy said you was the new leader. They don't want to deal with that. Then they got to deal with me, Max said. What you got to do to get into the gang, Tito asked. Jamal say you can be in it. You in it, Mac said. Two girls came halfway down the stairs, stopping when they saw the three boys in the hallway, turned, and went back upstairs. So we go over to the clubhouse now so they can scope you, Mac said. Yeah, okay. You coming, Tito? Yeah. Randy say I should be your warlord because, you know, when there's a fight in or anything, I can really get down, Mac said. Okay. Bet. Mac and Jamal exchanged high fives, and then Mac and Tito. Let's go on over there, Mac said. Yeah, and here's the thing. Put it in your belt, man. Jamal took the shiny pistol from Mac and put it in his belt. All right, guys, that's the end of chapter seven. Meet me here tomorrow, and we'll start chapter eight.